Hello everyone and welcome to the video. This is going to be Elder Scrolls Online, New Player Guide, Morrowind. So, when you start out in the game, you're going to have the option to go into the tutorial or not and go into it. <clears throat> that choice is ultimately up to you. If you never, if you never played ESO before, I would recommend just go ahead and doing the tutorial. If you played a little bit before, then you have an idea of what you're doing. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go uh, complete the tutorial. When you get out, um, or even if you're in the tutorial, I don't think you have access to people spamming uh, to be invited to a guild. But when you get done with the tutorial, uh, go ahead and... Uh, be on the lookout in the zone for guilds that are recruiting, especially if you've never played ESO. Um, get into as many guilds. You can be in up to five guilds. So go ahead and join a guild. Uh, join five as soon as you can. And whenever you get the opportunity, try to get a port or yeah try to use someone so let's say you're in a guild and you hit G the G button you can go into your guild through the roster you'll see an interface that comes up when you hit G go up to the top of the interface go over to the right where it says roster left click on it and you'll see a list of people in your guild the place that you're going to be looking for is Canarthi's Roost. As you can see, I'm in Canarthi's Roost right now. But if you can see that, if you see Canarthi's Roost, just right-click. Well, don't don't right-click on yourself because you'll leave the guild. So here's another person in Canarthi's Roost. So you right-click on them and then click Travel to Player. And once you do that, you'll be here in Canarthi's Roost. I'm currently in Canarthi's Roost. This is what it looks like. It's basically a, a large island. And then it has another smaller island uh, just to the north of it. And also, um, what you want to do is you want to get an add-on. Do a web search for Minion. Minion add-on and go ahead and get that installed and once you get that installed you will have the opportunity to install many add-ons uh, <clears throat> there is one that will tell you the locations of of chests so and what you want to do is you'll just want to run around and in my opinion it's you know if you don't have any resources available to you and you're new you know this is one of the best ways to collect resources early on in the game and get a chance to unlock other things that will help you in your beginning stages of the game uh, of course you know if you decide to do quests uh, do your quest follow the markers on your on your compass uh, the compass is up here on the top of the interface and as you turn you'll see that you'll see that at a, it'll it'll move with you and right now I'm pointing to the east and I can see that there's a quest off to the northeast if I continue in that direction and also other add-ons will have allow you to have icons in the game showing you items that you have found earlier in the game so as for me I have found many chests and that purple icon over there is what they call a treasure trove uh, you definitely want to keep your eye on those because they usually have good loot and so we're gonna try to continue on a little bit here and find a chest so I'm gonna mount up and just to give you I've been doing it uh, 
when you get out of the tutorial, well, if you skip the tutorial, you'll be level 3. If you do the tutorial, you may be a higher level. <clears throat> I don't know, but it's been a while since I actually did my first adventure into ESO. Uh, but I do remember probably being maybe around level 5 to level 7 before I finished some of the quests to where I was able to leave the tutorial island and go into the the real world of Tamriel. <clears throat> so as you can see I have uh, been going around the outer skirts of the island and when you're in, in Canarthi's Roost you want to go just around the, the beaches, the outer outskirts and loot the, the chest and uh, but if in order to do that you will need some lockpicks so in order to get some lockpicks <clears throat> you'll have to go to I would recommend going to Alec R and I'm going to show you how to so if you're in a guild it's going to be easy if you're not then uh, it's going to probably be a while before you can get to the Alakar Desert, but you can also find other places to buy lockpicks, uh, depending on where you start at. Uh, as far as Vordenfell, I don't know where you can buy a lockpick, but I know that, I know where you can buy lockpicks in Alakar, so we can go to Alakar, and we're going to right, uh, we're going to right click on this person here, and click travel to player. And now we will be going to Alagar Desert. We're going to be zoning over. So as you can see, joining a guild does give you a, a great advantage and helps to save time to complete goals that you set for your character um, at a much quicker pace. Uh, you'll be able to accomplish your goals a lot quicker. The Alagar Desert has minion, uh, minions, dolmens. It also has that you can use to level up. It also has group and world bosses. But for this uh, scenario, we're going to go to the left part of the map, which is Alec uh, Sentinel Way Shrine. So in order to travel to it, we're going to go to that icon on the map and then click on travel to Sentinel Ray Shrine uh, for free because there are ways to port to it, um, but it'll, it will cost you gold. Um, and if you're just starting out into the game, you're not going to have that much gold unless somebody gives you a lot of gold or enough gold to do the whatever it is you need to do in the game <clears throat> when you're starting out. So right now we're at the Sentinel Way Shrine. So and, and we're gonna go to this little area here just to the northeast of this shrine which is very close. So, uh, so we're gonna go toward these palm trees and then we're just gonna go up just a little bit further and you're gonna see a path here and in order to open your map you press M and then we're gonna find this little door here this is the Sentinels Outlaw Refuge I believe you will need a DLC either the Dark Brotherhood or the Assassins so when you go in here you press E And I would definitely recommend getting the uh, Assassin's DLC and the Dark Brotherhood. The Assassin's DLC will give you access to the Blade of Woe, which will help you greatly along your journeys. And we're going in, and then we're going to go to the first merchant on the left named Narco something. And then we're going to press E to talk to him. And we're going to hit store. And we're going to hit sell, and then we can also hit 
buy, I think? No. Okay. So, but here you can launder your items. So if you click on an item that has a question mark, you can press E. But we're not going to, you know, uh, you can go to the right icon in the top left of the interface. And you can launder if you want. Or you can just sell it to get gold. And getting uh, stuff like this, you can go into sneak mode and uh, press E once you're behind someone, once you sneak up to them. Uh, I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, you can steal items from that NPC. <clears throat> and, then what, <clears throat> and then once you got all their items, you can assassinate them with the Blade of Woe. <clears throat> and if they have more items, then you'll get more items from them. So this is another item, uh, another merchant here. So we're going to press E on Abiznaz. And then we're going to click Store Merchant. And then I believe we will have the option to buy. And he will have, if you look, he will have lockpicks that he can buy. The lockpicks are 9 gold. So um, you would have to kill a few mobs or maybe... Uh, participate in a few dolmens and get a little bit of gold and once you have a little bit of enough gold uh, maybe let's say a hundred gold <clears throat> you can buy about 10 lockpicks and that will be enough to get 10 chests which is gonna give you even more gold in return it's gonna give you also those chests are gonna have items it's gonna have armor weapons uh, and, and that's and those chests will have those items randomly so you never really know what you're gonna get each time you uh, pick and loot a chest so once we got our lock picks as you can see I have 71 <clears throat> you can go back to Canarthi's Roost using the guild function so I'm gonna find someone back in Canarthi's Roost so in our guild there's nobody in Canarthi's Roost so I'm gonna show you a different way of finding Canarthi's Roost and we're going to leave this guild uh, we're going to leave the refuge. So now we're leaving and we should be back in the Alakar Desert. Uh, we're in a different part of the city. <laughs> so, uh, I should be okay, but there's not a way shrine nearby. So, that's okay. So, you can always, if you're in a guild, if you're not in a guild, then you'll have to find a, a way shrine manually. And usually the way shrines will be indicated like, like this one here. So, I'm basically near a way shrine. So, let's say we're not we're not uh, we're not in a guild and we want to find a way shrine this is what the way shrines look like um, when you first start out you'll have to unlock them but as you do find them like so let's say that you did find one we will have to navigate to it manually so right now I don't have a horse so we're gonna have to run kinda of slow to get there <clears throat> Ooh -hoo. So right now I'm not wanted. If you have a one to level, just you have to be careful with the guards because they will um, take all your stuff. But as long as you have that 
So let's say you found some stolen lockpicks. As long as you go to make it to the refuge and get them laundered, uh, they won't take them away if they catch if the guards catch you. But if the guards catch you and you have stolen goods, they'll take them away from you and they'll make you pay a fine. Optionally, you can choose not to, but they'll try to kill you. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, so we're going to go this way, and then we have to go right, which is down there, so we have to go down that way. So, let's see if we can take some shortcuts here. There's a guard right there. And one thing you want to never do is attack the guards because they cannot be killed. Um, and that would be bad. They'll just, if you attack them, they'll just attack you and end up killing you. Unless you run away. Unless at some point in the future. So, in order to use the map to get to a place like an RP's Roost. You can right click to access the world map. And Canarthi's Roost is going to be at the southernmost point down here. And in order to be able to go to it, uh, you would have to have a either use a dock to travel to it initially or <clears throat> travel to a guild member. Uh, because when you first start out it's not going to be unlocked but if you, you do um, happen to visit there and get lost by accident this is how you find it again so this is Canarthi's Roost and then you move your mouse over ever so slightly and click on the way shrine icon it'll ask you if you want to travel there then you hit OK The other thing that you'll be doing right as soon as you can is every time you get a different weapon, uh, equip it until you unlock that weapon skill. And the way that you can check that is hit K. So right now I only have two weapons unlocked. I have two-handed and one-handed shield, but I don't have the skills unlocked yet. But with the two hand, I because you start with it, you uh, I did get the opportunity to unlock one skill, and it's on my skill bar. I got room for one more, which will probably be a skill in one hand and shield because I'm planning on making this character a tank, and I'm going to use puncture. As soon as I have it unlocked, I'm going to put it down here on my skill bar so it's leveling up the whole time that I'm playing the game. And initially when you first start out, you'll have these three skills that you can unlock with your class. Uh, Warden class, which would be Dive 4, Green Balance, Fungal Growth 4, and Winter's Embrace, Frost, Frost Cloak 4. This is basically, it's going to give you uh, and your allies a buff. It's going to increase their physical and magical spell resistance for 21 seconds. Fungal growth will heal you and your allies for 3,379 health. The third one will be a damage a ranged damage skill that will deal 3,379 3, magic damage up to 28 meters away and it can be done instantly. It uses Magicka so uh, the other skills do use Magicka also so uh, just keep that in mind. So when we go looking for chests, we open up our map, get a little, you can orientate yourself and find out exactly where you are on the map by pressing R. 
and that will show you where you are. Now I see some chest off to the southwest, so I'm going to try to make my way southwest using the compass. Get it out of the map and just get a general direction of where southwest is and head in that direction the best that I can. Uh, terrain <coughs> dictating. <coughs> when you're going down uh, off of cliffs or high distances when you're dropping, be careful because a high, if you fall, uh, I guess a large amount of feet down below you, you will die. So you have to be careful about jumping off of cliffs. Because you will take fall damage. Along the way you can loot butterflies that you can use to go fishing. And right here you can see that there's a treasure chest icon. And that's because I found a treasure chest here before, and the add-on is showing me where it was. So I know how to get back to that little spot every time, in case I do need to gather more resources. And as you can see, there is a treasure chest here that someone may or may not see, or they may not be interested in. Uh, so we got a chest here, but we have to fight off this mob, because it's kind of like protecting it maybe but we're gonna buff up then we're gonna use our skill boom then we're gonna use our left mouse button to attack and then we're gonna press E to search the the uh, skeever and then we're gonna press R to take all of its contents and then we can press E to unlock or pick the lock on this chest So you do have a time limit on how long you can uh, try to pick the chest. And then once you do, you can press R to loot all. And as you can see, I got a little bit of gold. I got some uh, the new items that you loot will be indicated by an exclamation point. And when you hover over it with your mouse, it'll say this item is new. And then you can see that this is... It looks like it's going to be a upgrade. It's going to be, give me health instead of Magicka. Having more health is always pretty good uh, in the beginning of the game. It's also going to give me the same amount, so I could equip that. Uh, but I think I'm not going to use it. So let's see if we have any new weapons. Nope. But I was doing the same process before, and you can see that I got a bow of the training. Now on this specific island when you loot the chest there's a very good chance you'll get bow of the trainee or armor of the trainee or weapon of the trainee set items. So if you get five set items it'll increase your health, magicka, stamica, uh, stamina and then the fifth uh, item will increase your your health, magicka and stamina so it's basically boosting your health, your magic, and your stamina by a good amount. So right now you can see I have Iron Sabatons of Health, Iron Girdle of Magical that I've been looting. I still don't have a good chest item. I have a pretty good uh, helm that I found by looting these chests. I don't have any shoulders, no hands, but I do have uh, leg armor, call it, uh, light armor breeches, and I do have a iron sword of shock, and Darge's shield, which is part of the trainee set, which is pretty cool. So. And we're going to move on to this little... Now, the other things that you can find are <clears throat> resources to make armor out of blacksmith. And you just press E to mine the ore. And then R to take all.
and as you can see there's other resources that you can find on the the beaches of Canarthi's Roost Now you can also uh, steal. So if you if you hit Control on your keyboard, and you'll be giving when you get close enough to some NPCs, you'll be given the opportunity. You'll give you, be giving the opportunity to use the blade of bow. Um, and basically, it's going to be a one-hit kill on the NPC. Or if you get close enough you can pickpocket them. So right now I have 50% chance. All I have to do is press E to pickpocket or X to assassinate. I'm not going to do that because I want to loot some more chest. But that's basically how you pickpocket and how you assassinate in Elder Scrolls Online. And we did go over how to loot chest and find them. And as you can see, there's many chests that can be found on the beaches of Canarthi's Roost. I think there's at least, so far, I've, ran, I've found at least around going around the whole island about 20, maybe even more. So this does give you another option besides doing quests. And besides doing uh, uh, other things in the game, this is just another way to make some quick loot, uh, get some quick items. Now we're going to go try to find a Dolmen. I'm going to introduce you guys to Dolmens. So I guess we can go to Oridon. Because there should always be people in Hordon. Eventually, we will, we will go to Wardenfell. We'll do a delve in, in Wardenfell. So we see that Raven is in Wardon. And we're going to travel to Wardon using our guild roster function. One of the awesome things that I love about ESO and porting to a player to, in order to get somewhere is definitely a great way to save time uh, and increase your efficiency uh, in reaching your goals in Elder Scrolls Online. Wordon has at least if I remember correctly, it has three dolmens. It has group bosses. It has world bosses. It also has a large town in called Volkel Guard, where you, where you can find merchants to buy lockpicks. Uh, it has a bank, and you can also find other NPCs to do crafting uh, and other craft skills. Right now, I don't. I don't currently have any crafting skills. I only have a world skill. I don't. I have the Dark Brotherhood uh, Blade of Woe skill, which I had to unlock uh, using the beginner quest, the starting quest. So it's also definitely a good idea to unlock the Dark Brotherhood, which can be the starting quest can be. Uh, NPC can be found in the Gold Coast on the docks. It will be a female NPC, which will give you, give you talk about the Dark Brotherhood, and she will ask you to murder a citizen of the Gold Coast. <coughs> so now we're going to try to find a Dolmen. I don't have any dolmens unlocked, but there should be a dolmen pretty close to the, the right here. 
So this is what a dolman looks like. It's this one is called the I Love a Mirror Dolman. So we're gonna try to get to that one and get some items items from that dolman, which is actually pretty close to the city, which is really nice. In order to leave a uh, Volkel Guard, you'll have to head Stop north citizen. down the path once you get to the Volkel Guard Way Shrine. And then you'll have a path that leads to the left. And we could just follow this around. And one other thing you can do is you can check your skills while you're running. So in order to auto run, you can press number number lock on your keyboard to start and to stop running. And we're going to see that the the uh, dolmen is off to the west, but we're going to follow the path to the north and then to the west in order to unlock the way shrine that's close to the dolmen. And then once you have all three of the dolmens unlock unlocked in Oridon, you can travel to those one and two or three dolmens back and forth pretty quickly to uh, do what they call dolmen groups and this would be a, an efficient way and as you discover things in the world of Tamriel and Vordenfell you will also get experience and then during certain times of the year you can also do special festivals such as so we press I and then when we press on the collections icon and then you press on mementos you'll have the opportunity to acquire the annual jubilee cake and then in order to use it you just find the icon and right click on it and then click use and then once you have it spawned you press E to use it and you will get a buff that will give you extra experience throughout your journeys. So we're almost to the way shrine right now. So we discovered a way shrine. We've gotten some experience from it. And now we're going to go south to a dolmen. And as you can see it, the the dolmen you will have to find you can find using add-ons that you can find at Minion, the, the Minion website. When you install that add-on, uh, you will have the opportunity, the, the Minion app. When you use the Minion app, you will have the opportunity to download many add-ons that will help you in your journeys. I would highly recommend getting a, a lot of add-ons to help you find places on maps easier and so on and so forth so right now you can see that there's people waiting here for the the dolmen to start right now it has not started and I'm gonna try to unlock my one hand and one hand and shield I do need a little bit more to unlock the first skill the first skill I'm gonna be getting is puncture because you can use that to get aggro from an enemy and it will keep your party members from getting attacked. This is the boss here, you have to be careful with these guys.
And usually one of the good things that you would want to do when you're doing a dawn is try to hit as many different mobs as you can, at least once or twice. And if you see a yellow body, that means you can loot it. Sometimes the prey turns and nips us. It is a small thing. Once the dominant has been completed and you see that big light, it will tell you that you completed it. You may or may not get a you get skill points uh, at lower levels and it's telling me okay so let's see you can press I you can also press K to see like here you can see that I leveled up in the upper left hand corner I gained uh, racial skills, and I also hit level five. So when you hit C, you'll see your character. You'll be able to add. Um, right now, I have five attribute points, so I can put. Four and two magicka. Whoops, I put five. But I didn't commit the points, so I can hit exit and hit C again, and then I can reallocate. So I can put four and then put one into health and then commit my points. And then in order to do unlock puncture, I just hit the plus sign to the left of the skill. And it's going to ask me if I'm sure and then I now have it unlocked and it's been added to my hot bar so that's oh okay so when you get finished one of the dolmen you also want to loot loot the chest before the chest disappears and then you just hit R to loot everything <coughs> And it looks like we got one new item, Maple Inferno Staff of Flame. We also have another Maple Fat Staff of Flame. And we got some other items also. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to another place where we can... Uh, get loot and items so if you're in a guild you can also go to Vordenfell if you have the Morrowind uh, if you did purchase Morrowind and you just find someone that's in Vordenfell right click travel to player and we're gonna try to find Adele which is another great place for uh, beginners uh, to adventure, get loot, have fun, and level up their characters. So now that I've already unlocked a skill for my one-handed shield, I want to unlock some skills in my... I have to unlock the skills for staff, and i got to unlock the staff weapon skills itself. Because when you first start the game, you're only going to have two hand, I believe. No, you're not going to have any any weapon. You, you'll have to unlock them by equipping a weapon to unlock 
access to that weapon and its skills. So as you can see right here, I only have two hand sword and one hand sword and shield or one hand weapon and two hand weapon. In order for <coughs> in order for me to unlock the staff, uh, a two hand staff which is going to be the flame staff is going to give you it's going to unlock uh, destruction staff skills so since I don't have a restoration staff I'm just going to have to go with what I have for now which is the maple inferno staff of flame and all I'm going to do is, a, is just hover over the weapon and then right click and then equip and it will, it will be equipped but as you can see I don't have the the weapon skills unlocked yet. I only have two hand sword, which is and one hand and shield. So okay, so now that we're in Bordenfell, let's see if we can find a delve. A delve is like a dungeon, an easy dungeon. So we see that there is something here to the east and something to the northwest near a way shrine that we can unlock. However, this uh, icon shows that it's just a crafting location. So we would have to actually find a different area that would have access to a dell. But usually uh, if you have the out on it may or may not show the delve itself that can be unlocked or you may have to just uh, venture in the world to find these uh, delves which will usually be near a path going to a way shrine and there are also uh, like this group boss icon Sulapan Grange uh, this is a group boss fight. Uh, there's going to be a when you go there. There's going to be a boss. There may be other uh, mobs around it that you'll have to kill. But you can go there and get special uh, loot uh, set items, which will also grant grant you experience and uh, gold and anything else, uh, uh, other miscellaneous items to help you in your journey. Hello everyone, <clears throat> and I also want to add in that there is uh, when you find delves, they're gonna have they're gonna the icon on the map is gonna look like a torch. Some of these torches are gonna actually be crafting stations. Uh, some of them are gonna be actual delves. For example, there is one here called. Hollinger's Toxin. Well, there's a quest. Uh, the name of the delve is Zane Sipilu. And it's off to the northwest, just right off the path. Now we're going to go ahead and go into that delve. It's a good place for beginners to go to there, get experience and items because usually in a delve there's going to be at least one boss. And there's also something called public group dungeons. Uh, those are where you can go in as a group. Uh, also means that other people can be in the in the dungeon with you, but they don't have to be in your group. They could be just be by themselves, uh, going into the dungeon looking for a quest and etc. etc. So right now we're just following the path from the cent, uh, the Way Shrine in Wardenfell, and we're just following it up to the northwest. And the del the the del will be off to the right. And in order to enter a del, you just go up to the door and press E to enter.
and once you get finished loading you will be inside the Dell and I open you can hit the, the map by pressing M and you can see that I have a quest that I have not completed which will entail me going northwest and then west through the delve itself usually the best uh, unless you can do the delve yourself it may be best to go with a group of fellow adventurers to aid you in the journey and this is one of the first delves that I did find in board and fell so I hope this uh, guide did help you guys this, and this is will now be concluding the video on Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind New Player Guide thanks for watching the video everyone and have a great day